There's this box marked in tape which I have to stand in. Good morning. Um, I'd like to introduce Dave, EI9FBB. First of all, um, a little bit of uh, background for him. Um, he was first uh, licensed in 1991 at the age of 16, uh, but very quickly discovered drink, cars, and women, and actually didn't get involved <laughs> in, in operating. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure in which, in which order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, for until 2004, at which point he was issued EI9FBB. Um, and although he hasn't actually taken his official Morse test, he, he, he does 35 words a minute very happily. If he takes his Morse test, he'll have to have a new call sign, which he doesn't want. So he's actually going to stay as he is. Um, very quickly from 2004, he got involved in um, DXCC and IOTA chasing. Um, so he's, he's very keen on CW contesting and chasing DX. He was the first EI to achieve 10 band DXCC. Um, and um, the achieved three first time IOTA activations, actually going out and doing stuff. He's also the team leader for the EIDX group. Um, recent trips have been to Nepal, Malawi, and there's one plan for this year. We, he may tell us about, I'm not sure. Anyway, I think that neatly introduces Dave. Take the floor. Thank you very much. <laughs> Great turnout. Thanks to you all for coming and uh, being prepared to listen about our little project. The uh, Irish Islands IOTA tour was a concept really just as an activity to uh, try and activate all the Irish Island IOTA groups within the one season. Uh, it was a project from the EIDX group, which is a newly formed group basically. It's, uh, we are two, two and a bit years old now. And basically, we're, we're trying to get uh, an Irish D expedition team going and create activity and interest on the, on the bands. So previous operations of ours was uh, last year, we did a 9 November 7 Echo India from the Himalayas up in Nepal. And earlier this year, we, did, uh, we operated from the shores of the lake, beautiful Lake Malawi, at 7Q7 Echo India, uh, doing 37,000 QSOs. So for this uh, project, we tried to activate all Irish IOTA groups. And uh, actually what we have here, we have four dedicated IOTA groups in Echo India. We have EU 006, 007, 103, and the Irish Islands Coastal Group, EU 121. And of course, uh, Aran Islands, Blasket Islands, the Salty Islands, and the Irish Coastal Islands. And of course, mainland Ireland is also EU 115. So in total, we had five uh, activations planned. To generate a little bit of interest, we also had a uh, award program going. You can see here the Salties is in the uh, southwest corner of uh, off County Wexford. The Blasket Island Group off of uh, County Kerry in the southwest coast. The Aran Islands off County Galway west coast of Ireland and we picked Bear Island which is EU121 there's 36 islands qualify as EU121 and you'll find out why we picked Bear Island it's probably one of the easiest ones to do there's 36 uh, islands in total that could qualify and from our logistics in Echo India Bear Island was the easiest one To generate interest, this is the award program. It was uh, supported by Ken RW3DD for most wanted DX plaques. <coughs> and even though none of the uh, none of the Irish Island groups are particularly rare, several of them hadn't been activated in three or four years. And quite often, you might have one guy going in a boat for a few hours with a car battery, but never making much of an impact on the IOTA totals. So we tried to get everyone to. Uh, chase us around the actual uh, different groups. And this is the plaque that was available. So simply you had to work us from any four of the five IOTA groups. And uh, of course when we operate from an island offshore in Echo India, our prefix changes to Echo Juliet. So we had EJ0DXG and the mainland stations were operating with EI0DXG. So the dates of act activations, this 
These, uh, this program was set out at the start of uh, the summer and of course several of them are weather dependent. And the Joker station, the mainland station, actually ran until the 30th of September, so the whole program is only finished with the last, the last two weeks. To date, we have completed all act activations. And we're going to start off with the Little Salty Island. EU-103, we saw earlier, is on the southwest coast of Echo India. And the dates we had picked initially, where we had a four-man team available, was the 15th of June to the 18th of June. But unfortunately, this was when S Storm Ar Irma, Irma hit, and unfortunately, we could not get a landing. The Little Salty Island is a pure tent and generator-style activation. You get a big boat from the mainland, will bring you maybe to the last 100 metres, where you transfer into a small little rib which brings you ashore and you hop out into the water maybe waist deep and, uh, and you wade ashore with your equipment. So here we see exactly where it is, off of Kilmore Quay in uh, County Wexford. There's two islands in the group, you have the Little Salty Island and the Great Salty Island. Both islands are privately owned by two different individuals. Both of them are a... Um, they are a bird nesting site with uh, very strong uh, wildlife and uh, mostly birds. There's uh, several different species of unique species of goose and it's, uh, it's also very important for the uh, migration. So the Great Salty Island, uh, you don't need any permission to actually visit it. Uh, there is daily boats going during the summer months and uh, the problem is you can't overnight on the island. The last boat leaves at four o'clock. But the island is welcome to day trippers. And quite often, th this is how these islands get activated. And you know, it might be just an activation for three or four hours. The Little Salty Island is also privately owned by a South African guy who's married to an Irish lass. And thankfully he welcomes amateur radio. And he's more than happy to, to accommodate people and once again, the island is privately owned. And it was last activated uh, three years ago when we previously did it. And it was amazing actually to see how an island could change so much over three years. And of course, we, we had our fair share of storms over the past th three years. The island is actually a farm. There is animals and there's a small dwelling on the island. No electricity, no running water. And there is a local uh, fisherman who, who will actually bring us out. Declan is here in the room with us. But the rescheduled dates, of course, there was only two of us available, which was over the bank holiday weekend. We got very lucky with the weather. It was very, very hot. And mixed in here, there's some photographs from the previous operation. But you can see the big boat and the small little tender and this is where we land here. Access currently restricted, please do not come ashore. So it's not very inviting really to day trippers. And uh, the local guy, the, the, the owner actually lives on the mainland. He doesn't live all year on, on the island. And um, he, he does take it quite personally if somebody does try to get on his island without permission. So this is the landing you can see here. And some of the rocks are quite large. And depending on the uh, time of your landing, you can have quite a long walk or a short walk ashore. So yeah, once again, it's not very inviting. You can see how steep and sharp and jagged some of these rocks can be. And all of our equipment has to be manhandled ashore, which is quite difficult when there's only two guys to do it. Because remember, you have to bring everything, generators, fuel, tent, table, chairs, all aside from uh, radio equipment. 
And once we come ashore, we scale the face of this cliff to actually get up to the higher level of plateau, which is a much more comfortable operating site. This year, we had uh, four uninvited uh, guests, four very pretty ladies, and they had grown very, very big horns. Because of all the uh, recent storms, the uh, animals have uh, become wild. The farmer wasn't able to get across to the island with uh, quite some time, and the, uh, the cattle have now become wild. And uh, there was a recent attack, but we were only told about this upon our return from the island. <laughs> <laughs> but thankfully, they left us alone. They were quite intrigued by our 20 meter yeah. vertical dive hole. And it was amazing because there was also goats on the island. And the goats previously used to keep the, the grass nice and manicured. But the goats died during storm Ophelia. And therefore, we were faced with maybe three foot high ferns and ferns which we had to flatten first of all to actually get a clear spot to pitch our tent and also a lot of the rocks have been dislodged when before they were firm and solid in the ground that you could clamber across carrying your pelly cases are now quite wobbly so it is it is getting quite difficult to get ashore and because of erosion also before we had maybe a 70 foot distance between the shoreline and here this is now maybe 110 feet so over three years, the island has changed quite uh, drastically, purely because of the weather. We did it in stages. But eventually, we got everything up and running, got our tent pitched, got the antenna set up, just enough for the first day just to get on the air and start putting QSOs in the log. We operated from 80 meters to 6 meters Part of our project was to try and include six meter operations from, from these IOTA groups. There was many uh, IOTA de expeditions, and unfortunately, six meters often gets overlooked, which is it's, it's a pity. If people could just take that extra few hours and, you know, e even for the IOTA contest, maybe stay on one day afterwards even and try to include six meters, would qualify for the uh, VHF awards. So this is the little dwelling. Once again, it's a converted um, farm building. The owner uh, resides here uh, several months of the year with, his, with his, his wife. They have to harvest the rainwater and uh, try to control the animals. So this is probably the rarest of, of the Irish islands. It's claimed by 32.3%. It was uh, three years previous since it was last activated. There was an earlier activation planned for this year by a UK group. And unfortunately, they too had uh, weather problems and weren't able to land during their time frame. So that's, um, that's the first island, the most difficult one, which brings us to the Great Blasket Island, which is off the southwest coast of Echo India, off of County Kerry, EU007. And this went quite a number of years without any activity. And locally, it was called Mission Impossible. It was the EU007 Mission Impossible IOTA. It's very, very uh, difficult to do. And also, we had uh, several uh, feuding boat companies, which both wanted, they all wanted the rights of the island. And there was quite a, quite a bit of uh, conflict going on for Many, many years down there, one operator chopping another guy's boat loose, etc., etc. Situated off, the off uh, Dingle. Dingle is a, a seaside town, a fishing town, and it's uh, very far west in Echo India. Blasket, they reckon, was first settled by the uh, Vikings, and it's an old Norse word which uh, translates into harsh or dangerous place. We did, we did that one as well. Pardon? We done that one as well. Did, very good. 
So once again, yeah, there is uh, four qualifying islands in the EU007 group. The Great Blasket Island is open to the public, and some of the other islands are uh, privately owned. And Blasket Moor translates as the big or great Blasket. There was a settlement here in the, the Blaskets. Great evacuation was in 1954, when the last of the islanders were evacuated. Purely, it was uh, very, very harsh, very, uh, very uncomfortable living. It was uh, three miles by Curragh, which is a little rowing boat, to shore. And it was a uh, seven miles walk to the closest doctor, or an 11 miles walk to the nearest undertaker. <laughs> So most people were actually born, di lived, died, and were buried on the island. <laughs> they were first introduced to alcohol by uh, passing fishing, uh, French <coughs> fishing boats. And they did not know what this brandy was. They thought it was a medicine. So yeah, very, very soon, lots of the island folk started getting sick miraculously. <laughs> and they had to keep taking some of this uh, medicine which made them better. <laughs> the fish is uh, world famous from the area. And because there's no pubs, no electricity, once again, no running water on, on the island, there was a lot of old Irish folklore and storytelling and songwriting, Cayley dancing. This is how the locals used to entertain themselves. It was actually very, very self-sufficient they had a very good policy going. Uh, you were allowed a cow, but you could only have one cow for every 25 sheep. So each week, each family would take it in turns to slaughter a sheep. So the island folk never went hungry. And uh, during the, uh, the Great Famine, the, uh, the, the residents of the Great Blasket Island were totally unaffected by the famine, which saw the death of millions of people from the mainland. There's no trees on the Great Blasket Island. It's very, the weather is too harsh. Trees do not uh, grow or survive. As a result, the only birds that actually visit the island nest on the ground. There was never a rat on the Great Blasket Island. If there was a rat, the rat would eat the eggs and would eventually kill off the, the wildlife. So this is why there's a strict policy of once again having to transfer. The big boat will bring you so far, and then you have to transfer into a small boat. There was no actual uh, direct landing allowed on the Great Blasket Island. And this is facing south, so you can see the extreme of the height of the mountain behind us. So if any uh, ZSs in the room are wondering why our signals were a bit weak, well, this is why. All the houses, the old ruined village, were all built in to the side of the hill with the heart wall, which is the, uh, the wall with the chimney on it built into the, to the side of the hill for, for drafting. These buildings here have uh, recently been renovated and thankfully now are available for rent, which makes it so much easier. You still need to bring your own uh, generator or battery power, but because you have a building, you don't have to bring any bedding, tables, chairs, utensils, etc. And not only that, there's actually, uh, this building here is actually a little uh, coffee shop for day trippers. So yeah, it's a very unspoiled part of the country. Last activated during July 2014, where we teamed up with a Polish group and did Echo Julia One Yankee. It was a big operation. We came second that year in the IOTA contest, uh, just beaten by our uh, Jersey friends. Two residents on the island, two donkeys. We call this guy Bob Marley. <laughs> and the beach is Antrobon, translates into English as the white beach or the white strand. And you can see why it's very, very nice, yeah. Completely unspoiled, because there's no shops or restaurants on the island. There's no litter, there's no cigarette butts. It's, it's completely unspoiled. The island is home to a large colony of grey seals, about 150 grey seals. 
And this operation, we actually operated from the uh, tip of the island. We did this to open up our view f during the contest so we could work into North America, South America, and the Caribbean. But this is our little landing spot. In that particular year, we had over four tons of equipment and everything had to be manhandled up this rocky path. <coughs> and it was a one kilometer trek to the far side of the island where we had the use of a quad, thankfully. Alternatively, we decided at the midpoint that we could actually scale the face of this cliff and drop some equipment right up here in our operating site. So some guys thought we were in training for rock all. <laughs> but this actually cut down uh, many, many hours of uh, manhandling. We actually formed a chain up the face of the, the cliff to get the equipment up. I think this photograph was used in the IOTA directory one year also. That's on the mainland, yeah. Not on this island, no, not anymore. There is, there is now since uh, this year, there has been 180,000 euros invested on the island. There's still no pier because they still won't allow visiting. It was always a slippy, rocky path. Anyhow, yeah. So these, um, these buildings are available for rent. This year's team, <coughs> once again, we had to bring generators, fuel, petrol. And we decided this year we would operate three stations and again with a six meter station. Once again, a local boatman from Dingle will actually bring you out. It's, it's 14 miles by sea from Dingle. And this is the path. And this is the part here which is new, which uh, these few cubic meters of uh, <laughs> concrete have cost 180,000 euro. Wow. And the addition of this handrail is new also, but this is the surface you're actually uh, clambering the shore on. We were very lucky because we were able to get several hundred meters separation between our antennas. We went 100 meters this way, came 100 meters this direction, and between 20 and 40 meters, we had 200 meters separation, which worked out flawlessly. We do use uh, Dune Star bandpass filters also, of course. Twenty meter vertical dipole right in front, which worked extremely well. Declan EI6FR, another Declan running SSB and FT8, and this was the four of us with the six meter beam. We worked about 220 QSOs and six meters from this operation. Claimed by 35.7%. And this brings us to Bear Island EU121. No Keith is um, interested in this one. 24 to the 26th of, opera, of uh, August. This was uh, just got activated twice. The first failed attempt to operate the uh, little salty island. We operated here as a backup plan. We already had four guys and permission from work and XYLs to actually go play radio for the weekend. So we operated Bear Island. And these are the 36 islands which actually qualify. as all part of the EU121 group, the Irish Islands Coastal Group. We picked Bear Island. It's a one and a half hours drive from our QTH. With a regular car ferry service, with 
several B&Bs, bed and breakfast to actually book with mains electricity is very, very comfortable. Martello View B and B. This is our uh, B and B of choice. The lady here is very welcoming, well aware of amateur radio. The local priest who lived on the island for many years was also a radio ham, and he was Ireland's only resident Echo Juliet station. So everybody is 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 uh, aware of amateur radio on Bear Island. X beam, six meter beam. We had uh, verticals for uh, 30 and 40 meters and a dipole for 80 meters. Five elements and six for the second operation. So Declan, our six meter guy. He was just back from Kosovo at the time. 20 meter vertical dipole. And this is the uh, second team. You can see how comfortable it is. We actually take over the ladies' dining room, uh, which becomes a shack. And she's more than happy to give us the exclusive use of the B&B. &B. Once we have a minimum of four guys, she will give us all four rooms, and it's very reasonable. This is Pete, our uh, FT8 guy. CW station, Jeremy and CW and SSB. Some local residents, they seem to like nylon rope, mysteriously. You've got to be sure when you're tying off antennas just to keep it up that little bit higher off the ground. Well, here, here is actually mains electricity, ah, right. so it's fine, yeah. We normally operate with ICOM 7300s and ACOM 1010 amplifiers, which are very versatile, far use with, with uh, generator electricity. Power supplies are excellent on them, and they're also used to uh, varying voltages. That's normally what we use. When we have space, we also have high power filters we use on, on the output of the amplifier. It's claimed by 41.9%. Signpost here to all the other different islands in the, in the area. Cape Clear is another qualifying island. Inish Boffin. And this brings us really to uh, Inish Moor and the Aran Islands. EU006, it's, uh, it's the fourth activation in this activity. And we actually planned it to coincide with our DX Vela, DX convention. It's our second year running it. We already would have uh, the hotel booked. We already would have several operators. So we, we coincided it to actually match with, uh, with these, these dates. Aran Islands, Inishmore, is the... Uh, the large island, Inish Man, Middle Island, Inish Ear, Little Island. Once again, it's very well serviced by ferry boats. Unfortunately, not car ferry boats, but passenger ferry, ferry boats departing from County Galway and County Clare. Very popular with tourists. It's where the famous Red Bull. Uh, cliff diving takes place. And also parts of the famous Farther Ted TV show was, was filmed on Inishmore. Craggy Island Tourist Office. <coughs> and this is our hotel. It's very, very comfortable. Once again, they're, they're getting used to our little quirks. Strange antennas and wires surrounding their perimeters for for the event. 
and strange men walking around the hotel as well, coming and going from shifts at different times of the morning. I remember last year I was getting up at 3 a.m. to go down and do a shift, and uh, the bar was still going strong at the hotel. <laughs> <coughs> Just some photographs from last year. And this year's Motley Crew. And it also actually provides a, uh, a platform, a, a station, a, a ready made station. And this year, everybody, every, every one of our uh, visitors was actually welcome to sit down and operate a station. I know Nigel G G3TXF activated it last year as his 108th DXCC entity. He'd been to Echo India several times before, but it was never QRV. And Don G3XTT was one of our guest speakers this year, who also activated uh, Echo, Echo India as a new one for his DXFC. Jonathan, MM0OKG. Martin G3ZAY did a stint, along with other uh, visitors. We did uh, three stations QRV, pretty much all the time, except for when the talks were going on. We activated last year during our uh, the same event last year, and just a few months before uh, this year's, the EJ7NET actually activated in the Island. A different island, but still one of, one of the qualifying islands in, within the same group. Claimed by 40.7%. A lot of these islands, as I say, they're not very, very rare, but they haven't been activated in, in a number of years. And that completes the, the fourth island of, of the activity. The bonus station, EI0DXG, was QRV right until the end of September, September the 30th. Now, Declan, the I9HQ here, managed our logs. He was our um, coordinator of our schedules. He also worked out the statistics. From all the combined events, we basically ended up with 32,000 QSOs, 155 DXCC entities along with worked all zones, worked all states, and several bands. Part of the project was actually to get as many EIDX group members involved as possible. With the expedition in, we realized that not every, not every one of our members is actually going to end up going on a de expedition. Some, some people mightn't have, the, they mightn't have the money, they mightn't have the time, mightn't be able to get two weeks off work, they mightn't be able to spend two weeks of family holiday time doing an un unselfish act like the expedition in some place, <laughs> some place tropical all on its own. That wouldn't be very, very fair. <laughs> There's many, many reasons. Some guys don't like boats, some people don't fly very well. And by doing an activity like this, actually got several people involved. They could just pop over to an island for a weekend and still be part of this, this project. It was really very easy to get, to get involved. And for even those people that didn't like boats, they were still able to operate from the, from the mainland stations. And because of the awards program, it was quite surprising the amount of people who actually worked us in all five IOTA groups. We are working on something for next year. Nothing is confirmed yet. It's still in, in the early planning stages. And unfortunately, it's not going to be an, an IOTA. So it's, it's pointless mentioning it at, at, at this forum. We, we, we do hope to actually do another IOTA activity before the end of the year. And we will be announcing this very, very soon. We were waiting on, uh, on Roger's big reveal this morning to see if we could include any of these. So we'll, we'll wait and see. That brings us to the end of, of all five Irish island groups. 
there's any questions, we would uh, welcome any questions right now. Michael. It seems really professional, even the branding on your slides. You've obviously put massive amounts of effort in. How did you... Well, that's very nice of you to say, Michael. It's, uh, you know, you're probably the only person in the room who realised that, who actually recognised it. It's, it's, um, it does take a lot of time. And, you know, for such a small group, we've only 25 members, and only 15 of these members are actually Echo India. So we, we have 10 overseas members. And there is only literally two or three key players who spend a lot of their personal time doing this kind of branding and PR. Declan is excellent, and even Charles M0 OXO, our QSL manager, uh, puts, puts a lot of work into, into, into PR for us. A lot of the organizing and planning I actually do myself. Uh, thankfully, I, I had experienced some other successful the expedition groups I was part of, FSDXA and F6KOP, which, which, which you know, and uh, it was a great insight into it. So yeah, it's, it's, it, it takes a lot of work and you know, really it's, it's um, trying to find an equal balance and the same I'm sure you find yourself when you are planning at the expedition team. We do try to welcome newcomers or less experienced guys to actually come join us, but at the same time maintain an equal balance of experienced guys, less experienced guys, <coughs> SSB guys, CW guys, and it can be quite difficult at times and trying to make sure that everybody gels also. You know, thankfully us Irish are fairly thick-skinned, you know, but you know, there has been a few cultural clashes through the, through the past few years. But we all have the same aim, we all have the same objective, and it's really for the success of the project. And everybody usually works fairly well together. Uh, anybody? No? Yeah, Pete, G6KUI. We went to uh, Blasket and uh, Salty about 20 years ago. It was my first uh, de-expedition. I uh, went with Ken. And uh, it was it, seeing what you did and what we did. You know, it's uh, great fun to go and do these things. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, you know, when we went to uh, Blasket, we went up that roadway up the top and uh, we it's rather steep carrying all your stuff up there yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, uh, Ken uh, termed a phrase Pete it got blasketed <laughs> climbing up there yeah. Yeah, I was absolutely flat out on the ground and uh, you know with uh, <laughs> you can see <laughs> uh, it was uh, quite funny and uh, uh, I think we we stayed in some of the uh, there was no there's no accommodation then on blasket and we stayed in one of the, uh, we put a tent up in the remains of one of the, one the of houses the ruins, there. Yeah. And uh, the water was a pipe that came out the side of the hill there. And it was beautiful looking over down onto that little yeah, beach yeah, there. Yeah, it is quite it unique. Was, it's, uh, and I had a walk down on that beach there. And it was uh, absolutely uh, fantastic there with the sun shining and everything else. Yeah, no, and, it is. Uh, it and when we went unique. to Salty, um, we, we went on to the, the big island, Salty there, we got permission to go. And we stayed in the, uh, is it the well house okay. there? Uh, and we uh, operated downstairs and we slept upstairs there. You were one of the lucky guys because these days he won't allow access to anybody. Right, well, yeah. they say this was 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyhow, it's great uh, seeing your presentation here. And uh, Thank you, uh, thank you. Right, thanks. David? Um, I just wanted to know about the equipment. Um, is it all individually owned or is there any pooled equipment or wh how do you do that? Right now, it's a combination of both. We are, we are only two years old. We have only 25 members. Uh, but we have invested in uh, eight laptops in uh, maybe 800 metres of good quality low last coax. But our major investment was actually with these high power filters. We have a set of uh, four kilowatt high power filters for the output of the amplifier. It's quite often when we are de-expeditioning, we don't have as much real estate as we would actually, actually need, especially when you're running multiple stations. 
we were able to operate in band actually from Nepal on, on, uh, uh, from Malawi on uh, one or two bands, 15 metres worked particularly well. The ICOM 7300s we're finding very, very good also. You know, very easy to use, very user friendly and also very good performance and uh, Intimod is quite low on it. But as always, separation between antennas is, is key. And uh, our, our amplifiers are ACOM 1010, so we're not running kilowatts by any means. It's capable of 800 watts, but normally we, we operate at four, four, five, 600 watts. You know, we're just fortunate with uh, Malawi and Nepal, we had kilowatt licenses for, for both of these, but you know, it's, you don't need it really. I was interested in Nobby's idea of using those Italian linears, which is all right if you're not near any populated areas for sproggies and whatnot. But uh, <laughs> I wondered how that might impact you yeah, because they're very lightweight. I'm not sure how, 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 how several of those amplifiers would, would perform in a multi-transmitter environment. Not well. Uh. Yeah. The ACOM 1010 is particularly good also because it's 18 kilos. And when you put that into a Peli case, it's 23 kilos, which is ideal for airlines. I was quite taken by the uh, scale in the cliff picture. <laughs> Do you want to expand on that? But were people actually going personally up and down ropes? That was a shortcut, as I say. You know, it was one kilometer from the actual landing point. Uh, this, we actually operated from there to avoid the big hill behind us. And we did have a quad motorbike actually commuting up and down, but because the ground was so soft, it's, it's, it's very boggy. And the uh, physical weight of, of the equipment that we had, the, quite often the quad actually got stuck and we had to push it. So by actually disembarking this way, we were actually lowering stuff up and down on, on a rope. But it was a bit elevated also and, and staggered. And we, we used to find that uh, midway is it was getting lodged or, you know, stuck on the ledge. So that's why we had different guys at different levels. Very brave. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? In which case, I'd like to say thank you ever so much, Dave. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful talk. Thanks for Thank you very much. much.